Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, so some of the things that I had planned for today might not work, but uh, we'll 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 see. We'll deal with it as we get to that point in the discussion today. But um, so we're going to be reviewing some of the information that you were reading in chapter one. And um, I have some other activities along the way too. Uh, but uh, first thing that I wanted to do is to uh, get organized. Um, it's come to my attention that some of you or probably all of you cannot access the assignments and the, um, the quizzes for the course. I I think the discussions you you looks like uh, you've been able to access that. I was able to uh, read some of your responses to the discussion prompt for uh, uh, for the first week and and respond to to I believe most of you. Um, but what I would like you to do, I would like you to email me my email address, and you can find that in the syllabus. Um, and let me know if you are able to, if you're not able to access the um, the assignments in Moodle and the quizzes in Moodle. I need to know that right away. So um, be sure to take a moment after this lecture to contact, contact me, me. Email. Okay, so thank you. Okay, so I'm going to. Okay, so the learning objectives for this chapter are um, that you should understand the environment in which research decisions are made and the language of professional researchers. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, vocabulary yeah, that was uh, shared in that chapter. And we'll, we'll, we'll discuss some of that here as well. So one of our uh, research thought leaders um, says that the, the next two to three years will be more transformational than the last 50. And that's the CEL outlet survey or uh, KPMG. So what do you think that uh, this, this means? Why, why are the next two to three years Going to be more transformational than the last 50. What what factors are um, are involved in, in in that? And this is just an open discussion. You can speak up uh, at any time and uh, and share with the class uh, your your thoughts on that. What? So, what has happened um, recently and what you, you predict will happen within the next two to three years that's going to make, you know, uh, this, this, this huge transformation uh, happen. So I'll just you know, to think about that and, and just speak up. Uh, we have someone in the chat there. Okay, so in the chat, um, someone says that um, we are in VUCA world. So, so uh, explain to to us what you mean by the you know this VUCA world. And and I, I think I know your your but um, go ahead and uh, Mohammed uh, in the. Uh, Explain to us what you mean by that. You say changes are coming fast. That's true, but what changes specifically? And uh, and Elena says that because of technology and AI development, and I think that's right on the mark. So that's um, I, I believe that's very true. We've seen just in within the last several months, within um, less than twelve months, uh, this huge evolution in AI intelligence and, and, and how the, the AI applications are working, chat GPT being probably the most 
talked about AI uh, out there, but there's there's there are others too. But so we'll just start with Chat GPT. It has changed how we do a lot of things. So I was um, uh, in, in one of my other roles. I, I'm an instructional designer and e-learning developer. And um, in that community, there was some concern that this chat GPT might displace us as professionals, that it, it, could, it could do everything that we can do. But um, I don't see it that way. Actually, I see it as an enhancement of what we can do as instructional designers. I've, I've been um, experimenting with it and playing with it, but um, I've learned that if you don't really understand the concept of um, the thing that you're trying to get it to do, then it doesn't really work very well. You, you have to bring some um, experience and intelligence to the app, and you have to know the specific things to ask it uh, to do. Um, so, so that's just, just um, right on the money, I believe, there, um, Elena. So thank you for that. And, and Mohammed, I think you're probably seeing the same thing. I'm just I'm not um, familiar with the, the, the VUCA um, world. Um, um, I think it's, uh, it? uh, it's 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 description. Uh, it's uh, acronyms for uh, the volatile and uncertain and the complex and ambiguity world. It's indicate that uh, this uh, this acronyms or uh, VUCA is uh, first uh, mentioned in Harvard Business Review magazine uh, about four or six years ago. Uh, it talked about all changes which come fast to the world and. Uh, in all fields, like uh, uh, you mentioned in the field of uh, AI, uh, artificial intelligence, and chat GPTs, and in all industries and all business and all world uh, life generally. Okay, oh, very good, very good. So that's, just, thank you for, for clarifying that. So that's very good. So this is true. This is very true, and, and I think, um, and I think you probably, can um, gather from the uh, the reading that AI is going to be a huge part of this. And this, so Samyon says, I agree that technological advancement and the digital revolution are to help us in day-to-day -day work and not to replace the human mind. I, I believe that's true. You know, um, this is uh, this is nothing new, right? So. I worked in wireless telecommunications for a long time, uh, and I, I was part of the engineering um, group that did the infrastructure in the U.S. And so, what uh, I noticed is that a lot of people were very resistant to go to um, wireless technology. They 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 didn't want it because in the U.S. we had a very strong um, wired uh, infrastructure and it had been around for over 100 years and so people were very um you know they were just you know very comfortable with it they didn't want to change and uh, this happened uh, through the course of time people thought their airplanes were just a fad it was just some hobby that the wright brothers and others had um, undertaken and that it would never catch on. People did not believe that um, um, air travel would ever um, uh, be a thing. And then by the, you know, the 20s, 30s, 40s, uh, commercial airlines started to, to um, take hold. And now, very few people will travel you know, from continent to continent uh, without using that means of transportation. So that's um, that's just one thing. Another thing, people thought motion pictures. In fact, they thought that motion pictures uh, had a moral, you know, a dilemma that they didn't want um, to be an actor was was, was seen as um, something that uh, you didn't want to do. It was it it was shameful, and also motion pictures was just you know a fad, something that they did. Um, 
at these um, carnivals or, or what have you. It was just an attraction. And now it is a multi-billion dollar, uh, dare I say trillion dollar industry. And, um, and yeah, it's not going anywhere. We have streaming services and it's evolved into a whole lot of different things. And the same, same thing with television. Uh, it's evolved. People didn't think it would catch on. Even radio. Um, so, you know, so here we are with uh, with AI and, and, and other um, um, technology that's going to, uh, as it says, it's going to transform, uh, you know, the way we, we do things here within the next two to three years more than it has within the last 50 because of uh, this just this rapid development of uh, technology. So Mohammed says uh, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, and okay. so thank you very much for that. So let's go. And and then and then at any point if you want to uh, anyone who who uh, said oh I, I wish I could have said this this go ahead and and, uh, and you can speak up at any time. The, the lecture is basically going to be on this topic so we can we can continue to go on. So students of business and research. It's never been more important for students of business to learn and master the tools and processes of business research. As we enter the fourth industrial revolution, that's what this whole transformational thing is, business models that have worked for a century or more are no longer delivering desired growth. For all industries, it's a time of radical reinvention and innovation delivered at a breakneck pace. That's this rapid, you know, development uh, I was talking about. Artificial intelligence, we are AI, robotics, automation, virtual reality, and this choice and access. This is another thing we have, this rapid, you know, uh, communications ability. Is, and so it is, uh, I need it now, uh, mindset. Um, endless choice and access, mass customization, fragmented attention, reschooling and retraining of employees. That's a very important one there. Uh, defining an organization's purpose beyond profit, uncertain cybersecurity, re re redefinition of privacy, quantum computing, climate emergencies, and ethnic and gender inequities are just a few challenges for business making headlines. So that's um, that's a lot. So and 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 they 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 use that as the um, uh, that that is their 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 impetus their 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 um, explanation uh, and reason uh, and purpose for why um, business research is important. So so what what are your thoughts about that? I mean, you know, this this one about uh, defining an organization's purpose beyond profit. I mean, is there even such a thing? Uh, what um, what could that possibly mean? They, the profit is the that's that's the end goal, right? Is to is to make profit. That's why people go into business. So why why would they include that in in this in this list? of things that uh, they've included here, as well as some of the others. So um, we've talked about AI, um, and I, I think uh, robotics and automation, virtual reality, as soon as things are gonna be included in that, but it says uh, fragmented attention. Um, there's some, there's a lot there to, to unpack. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put it out there to you. I'm gonna, you know, uh, you can take your time on that. I'm not in a rush. We're we're here for for a while, um, so just if you feel like it, you can start typing and just unmute yourselves and and speak up. I really want to hear your feedback on this. It's, uh, there's a lot there. Okay, so I'm going to go back to um, when we're talking about AI. Mohammed, you said that you agree with the idea that 
AI will replace us as professionals. So, so, so we have two opposing point, point of views here. So, um, that that's interesting. So, in 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 the future, how do you see that? Do you think that would happen uh, within the next two to three years? You think that's going to be in the next hundred years? How quickly could you see that happening, Mohammed? So, if you could uh, just you know, let's let's talk about that for a while because I think that's something that's going to affect all of us. We're here in a business. <laughs> yeah, uh, most of you are are pursuing your master's in business administration. And uh, here we have um, technology that is created by humans, but it could replace us as well. So, Mohammed, I, I I would love to hear your your thoughts on that and why you feel that way. Yes. Okay, I, I can't hear you. I see you unmuted yourself, Mohammed, but I, I do not hear you. Yeah. Try speaking up there. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. yeah. I can, I can hear you now. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah, uh, so it's, it's uh, I don't think it's in, in the future because uh, as of now, uh, as an example, my company let go like more than 18,000 people. Uh, especially in the uh, software field, like uh, uh, programmers and uh, software developers. Uh, so this is uh, huge, and this is not like uh, easy. And I think it's coming. So just imagine, ChatGPT will make your job easier. It will save uh, more time, so your employer will need less people. Uh, than today. So let's say instead of 10 employees, they will need to with the rapid development and the AI technology. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's that's a good argument. I, I, I go back to um, to this current slide here, and I notice that it has robotics there. And this is something that I've seen in within my generation. Um, when they first started to build automobiles, they had these huge factories and they employed all, a lot of people. They built entire community cities, uh, Detroit, Michigan, and others were built around uh, this uh, uh, this concept of, uh, of um, um, automobile manufacturing. And then along came robotics, and um, and it could do it faster. It could do it more efficiently. Uh, it could do it with fewer human error, um, and it works around the clock. It was not uh, an eight to five, you know, ordeal. They could they could do this twenty four seven because machines don't need to sleep. They need, they need to you know rest or eat. They can continue to um, to to work at, at this you know the, the sky's the limit. Another thing that um, and you you might it, it's kind of uh, uh, automation is, is to, talks about automation and uh, and robotics and AI all tie tie together to um, autonomous vehicles. So these uh, autonomous vehicles of self-driving cars is another one. So uh, this could potentially put um, uh, taxi drivers out of work, uh, Uber drivers, people who are doing that as a side hustle. Um, trucking industry, this is a big one. Uh, we've heard a lot about this lately in the news, um, th that these autonomous delivery vehicles, freight vehicles, where um, they won't have drivers, and and right now that the, they rely on these drivers uh, being able to do these long shifts, but they can't do it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But uh, self uh, a driving uh, truck could do that, and so that would 
replace millions of, uh, of workers. Chucking right now has always been in high demand and uh, it's, it's just one of those go-to trades that a lot of um, uh, people will do when, uh, um, when times are hard and it pays well in, in most cases. But um, with autonomous vehicles, that will disappear. That would absolutely disappear. So thank you, Mohammed, for, for um, uh, speaking up about that. Uh, go ahead. Uh, this is uh, Mohammed Hussein. Yes. And I think also, uh, as you said, uh, some uh, jobs and profession will disappear. But uh, with the new changes, I think there are a group of jobs which be created, not to be uh, before. Uh, like um, uh, a lot of profession in, in the past century and the past uh, 100 and 200 years, it disappeared, but it replaced by new jobs. Uh, for example, we will miss the drivers. Uh, AI will drive cars automatically. But uh, we will uh, create a new jobs as uh, the IT technician who will program uh, the new cars. So I think it, a group of jobs disappeared and replaced by another uh, group of jobs. Okay, very good. I, I, I like that. That's, and we have seen that, right? We've seen where um, they didn't have software engineers before, you know, the, they had computers and computers had replaced a bunch of people. The IBM replaced a, 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 a huge, you know, um, um, section of, of uh, people at NASA. However, then they needed programmers in, uh, in, in that movie. Um, oh, goodness, I, I can't remember the name of the movie now, but uh, it, uh, um, it'll come to me in a second, but it was about this woman and, and her her friends who were computers uh, for for NASA, and uh, it talks about their struggles. But but in within that movie, uh, although you know the movie talked about uh, some of the um, you know the um, yeah, I think they even talk about it here in one of the uh, inequities of uh, of women in, in in the employment place and, and women of color and. And things like that, but in the in the, the background, uh, the the movie talks about how technology had replaced the entire division. But this uh, in the movie, at least, it depicted this one engineer, um, the one woman, figured out that you know we needed to adapt, <laughs> and so that's I think maybe that's that's along the lines that yeah you know, what you were talking about, Mr. Hussein, and uh, that. Um, it was uh, it, it it created an opportunity for people to to evolve professionally and uh, and and to to uh, adapt to this new this new technology. So so very good, very good there. So Elena, um, let's read your your comment here. Um, I can contribute my experience uh, uh, as an analyst. Part of my job involves periodically examining calls of salespeople by um, says, uh, monitoring specific metrics. Okay, currently we are conducting tests with AI software for transition to automated call analysis, analysis where AI will evaluate phone conversations. So soon AI will replace part of, of your responsibilities or part of their responsibilities. I, I, I think you're saying so. so that's wow. That's very interesting. So, very, thank you very much for sharing that uh, very real and very personal uh, um, example. And then, Mohammed uh, Yusuf, you said, um, "I never use self checkout as a standpoint, but many people do." So, I, I, I correct me if I'm wrong. I think what you're saying here is that you don't use it because you know it's actually replaced some jobs for people who were. Um, uh, previously uh, employed by that uh, uh, that particular company to 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 do checkout and and you're right that was another that was another go to job it was uh, to be um, checkout a Hill Street checkout person so well, very good um, right. oh Hidden Figures is the name of the movie that's the one I'm thinking of <laughs> yes Hidden Figures. 
So very good. Okay. Um, let me see here. Okay. So it's just strategic inflection point. Time in the life of a business when its fundamentals are about to change. The business environment dramatically shifts some elements of its firm's activities through uncertain taken for granted assumptions into question. It requires a response to the disruptive change. So that's, that's more convoluted, huh? Let's, let's see here. Um, Okay, so so this this it is and this is one of the um, uh, the the terms that um, they address in uh, the research language uh, or the language of research for, uh, professionals. So throwing certain taken for granted assumptions into question. Um, so what what do we what do you think they mean by that? What what are some of the, the these uh, taken for granted assumptions uh, that that they could be talking about here? And um, so 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 put on your research hats and 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 uh, and think about um, uh, some of the the things that uh, uh, could um, could be in, in that category of taken for granted assumptions. Um, I'll toss one out there. Uh, customers. So, so um, they have a specific type of customer, and um, uh, they've catered to this customer, and and this the, the product is is based around this specific demographic. Uh, however, demographics, because of the rapid changing changes in technology and the way we communicate. Uh, demographics are also evolving and changing. They are not, um, uh, it, this is not a stagnant uh, thing. It is not finite, um, but it is ever changing. So the, the demographics uh, in which we are a part of, we, you know, we are demographic here. We're an online university and we're a synchronous online university, which is a different demographic from asynchronous uh, modes um, modalities that I teach in. So, um, yes, Mohammed, Mr. Yusuf. Yes, you can go ahead and speak. Take an example of, uh, let's say, uh, online uh, shopping. So, uh, my understanding is the expectations will be higher. So instead of, let's say, before the delivery used to be three days or in seven days or in some like retail stores, like online stores were like a couple of weeks. So now we have same day uh, delivery. So mm. the customer will be expecting his package to deliver in the same day. I know uh, this makes it like harder for the business, but because of the competition in the market as well, they will do their best to uh, meet the customer expectations. And this will create a lot of competition in the market as well. Okay. Very, very good. And you know, that, um, that makes me think of the example of some of the uh, retail outlets here in the U.S., um, uh, J.C. Penney's and Sears, uh, Sears Roebuck, some of the companies that have been around for a long, over a hundred years, they they have been, and they um, always relied on. Uh, well, first, it was catalogs where people would actually order um, stuff they didn't have uh, a physical a location uh, to begin with, and and then they evolved to the physical location. And then it was the whole shopping mall concept. And then um, Amazon came along. And then um, COVID-19 came along. And that really just up that the whole in-person, you know, you're going to go down and, and, and pick this up at the store 
concept and already those stores were struggling long before COVID-19 hit. And, um, and so a lot of them see Amazon as, you know, the enemy or they see the big box stores as the enemy um, to this taken for granted assumptions that they had of how retail worked. Um, but uh, yeah, they, 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 uh, they, they weren't uh, forward thinking. They, they didn't um, do the research um, to, uh, to see um, what the trend was. So, so, so very good, very good. Um, let's see what we have Up here next. Okay, the role of data and decision making. So every manager in the course of his or her career will make thousands of decisions. In business, the decision Making an adjustment after thoughtful consideration is always followed by one or more actions. This is true even if the decision is to change nothing and the action is to do nothing. Each decision is triggered by a, a management dilemma, a problem or opportunity that reflects the recognition of a difference between a desired and an actual condition. And I, I want to focus on that one for um, here in a minute. One very important decision a manager repeatedly faces is whether he or she has sufficient information drawn from data previously collected, including personal experience, or needs more information or new insights to make an effective decision to address um, a management dilemma. So that's uh, so that's that's. Great. So, so it, it's just a, it's a problem or an opportunity. So, uh, this management dilemma. And drawn from data previously collected, including personal experience. So, do you think that um, in this management dil dilemma, uh, when I say um, including personal experience, is it just a personal experience of that manager? Or um, does it go beyond that manager's personal experience? But what do you think they, um, uh, yes, Samia, please. Um, I can shortly talk about the data and data, the role of data in decision making, because not just as a business lead analyst, I also work as a data analyst in IT industry. And mm -hmm. this is really that data provides businesses very valuable insights and help them identify any patterns and trends and really enabling that performance um, all over the teams. Um, for example, in some of the projects I was working um, as, a, as a PO and really helping pull those reports, uh, sales reports and, and then the performance reports so that, that business owners can review those and then make the decisions towards whether they want to keep a product or whether they want to keep up uh, an individual in the team. So it's definitely data is the key and it's really helping businesses making informed decisions. Oh, very good. Thank you for that. Uh, any, anyone else want to um, to add to that? I think that's, that's, that's great. Yes, yes Mr. Yusuf. Yeah, I think it's uh, also it's 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 called the uh, data driven decision making because you need to take the decision on time uh, uh, to be like eff like effective. If you don't take the decision on time, it will be like so late. So you you it's it's kind of a loss, uh, especially in the fast uh, uh, paced uh, environments. So you need to take the right de decision on the right time. So having like uh, uh, data like uh, and and I think in data uh, analysis now there is uh, many platforms will uh, help you uh, with the, especially with the data uh, uh, like uh, visualization and uh, uh, historical data to make it easier for you to take, to take the right decision. Very, very good. So, so then, uh, 
I guess, Samuel, what you what you do, Samuel, is uh, is very important. I mean, that's one of those those roles where, um, as Mr. Hussein was saying, that uh, it'll evolve, and uh, you you won't have anything to worry about in the future. <laughs> that's uh, it seems like that'll always be something that we'll need, unless they create an AI that can do that. Um, but we'll, but the time will tell. Uh, great, um, great comments. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so let's see here. Um, okay, good, good, very good. Okay, so um, I, I wanted to do a breakout room activity here, um, but uh, sadly, I have to admit that um, it doesn't look like that um app is included here with uh with um our uh our product and, and, and if it is i i cannot find it and i will have to uh get with the university to to see if they um if they have embedded that uh it's easier with with uh, zoom uh it just has a little toolbar at the bottom there uh, where I can put you in breakout rooms. So we're going to do this as a group. And, um, and so it's going to require you to take a few minutes to kind of gather your your, your thoughts on uh, on these prompts I'm going to give you here momentarily. But um, we'll spend uh, a good amount of time uh, with, uh, with this for, for sure. Um, Good. Okay, so. All right, so this 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 was this were the, the instructions if we were able to do breakout rooms. But, uh, we're not going to be able to, to do that. Okay, um, let's see. Okay. All right. So um, the first task, since it's not going to be group, we'll do this together. Um, we're going to distinguish among the following sets of items and suggest the significance of each in a research context. So data, information, and insight, concept and construct, deduction and induction, operational definition and dictionary de definition, concept and variable and hypothesis and theory. So um, take a minute or, or, or two, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you about five minutes here. We're gonna, I'm gonna um, uh, jump back in here at 7.50 or actually in your time zone, it's gonna be 9.50 or in, um, we will uh, address these and uh, and and it's it's an open forum. You can put it in the chat or you can just unmute yourselves and speak up. So five minutes uh, just kind of go through through uh, through those there. okay. Okay, uh, someone says uh, that they would like to have 10 minutes, which is what I was going to give the group. So, okay. Thank you, because five minutes will just pass by. <laughs> that somebody <laughs> just go to the restroom and it's fast. So, 10 minutes at least. Thank you. You're here. See, there you go. So, some, some is, uh, she has your back. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> she's taking care of you. So, 10 minutes, okay? Thank you, Professor. All right. Okay, so we're, we're going to start to um, come back together here, but uh, while you're um, while you're you're still thinking about some of these things in that uh, that first task, I, I wanted to share with you a video real quick here. So I'm just go ahead and I'm going to get out of that and. Okay, so I had a noise suppression on there. I just turned it off. Yes. Are you using Mac or Windows? I'm using Windows. Okay. Uh, in the Teams, when you start sharing, directly when you press share, 
okay there will be uh, the following the, the 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 below first point will be share content and beside it there is include computer sound uh, excuse me professor i have a quick i have a quick uh, solution now i yes. share just i just share this video from youtube on our whatsapp group but we see so it in the application of whatsapp okay okay so okay it's then um let, okay let's try it one more time i think it had a noise suppression turned on i just turned it off um i'm gonna see if that might fix it if not uh then we will Professor, I can share from my side. OK, so let, OK, if, it, if, if you don't hear this time, then we'll, we'll, we'll uh, share yours. Is that uh, Ahmad or was that um, who, who said that we would share? Ahmad, yes, Ahmad. OK, Ahmad, OK. You can see it, you can see it now, right? I can see it, yes. Um, are 23 times more you likely to improve customer yeah, acquisition. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. Data-driven organizations are 23 times more likely to improve customer acquisition and 19 times more likely to increase profits. Let's discover the basics of data-driven decision-making. Watch this video until the end to find out which companies with global recognition use the approach. So, data-driven decision-making refers to the decision-making process based on the profound analysis of massive volumes of data and its patterns. <laughs> Striving to be data-driven, many enterprises are developing three core capabilities, such as analytics agility, data proficiency, and community. Among the leading countries with data-focused decision-making approaches in organizations worldwide are the United States, the United Kingdom, and Germany. Aren't you wondering why data-driven decision-making is so important? Let's learn. Implementing data-driven analysis helps companies to reduce costs and optimize expenses by uncovering the most efficient ways of doing business through massive data analysis. Businesses can also apply data analytics to make better business decisions and deeper analyze customer behavior, industry trends, and product or service performance. And what about you? How do you follow and analyze the latest industry trends? Share your experience in the comments. Some other reasons that data-informed decision-making make businesses better include adding more confidence to various business decisions, increased proactivity in decisions, better control over different aspects of business performance, fostered based decisions over assumption-based, valuing and reducing related risks, as well as leveraging potential outcomes decreasing the bias in decisions and plans that transform from the occasional idea into a step-by-step -step -step strategy. More, More transparent and objective, and objective decisions. Easier progress evaluation and performance analytics. Access to agile and flexible business decisions. Improved forecasting and more efficient future decisions and the eliminated possibility of human error. As the stats and trends analysis don't lie. Among the most essential benefits any business can gain with the powerful data analytics approach are greater transparency and accountability. As a data analytics approach significantly impacts the collaboration and improves the communication and contribution of each team member. Continuous improvement. As obtaining key data from a decision-making process ensures the business achieves consistent results. Business decisions are always tied to analytics insights, so it becomes easier to spot the patterns as relevant data emerge and identify the gaps to work with. Reduce costs and improved revenue. 
as data-driven approach can provide tons of valuable insights on how to optimize business budgeting and a better understanding of market trends. As adopting a data-backed methodology helps to better understand the market trends and customer needs. This methodology is much easier to implement. All you need to do is identify business objectives as it significantly helps organize the data collection and ensures effective resource utilization. Then research data sources as it helps to launch a long-term multi-use and functional data-informed decision-making. Then clean and organize your data as it's important to have all the data structured and organized before the actual analysis is started. Then perform statistical analysis and develop insights. And finally, draw conclusions that would help you put your business in the right direction. By the way, we recommend you read our article with a review of the top data science programming languages. The link is in the description. Finally, to prove the efficiency of the data-based approach, we'll name the most famous companies with global recognition that use data-driven decision-making. The list includes Google, Amazon, and Netflix. More and more companies today started leveraging big data to enhance their decision-making. This approach helps companies to grow faster than ever. And do you think your company needs to implement such an approach? This video was prepared by the Jelvix team. We help top brands worldwide to innovate and accelerate digital transformation. We share the latest news about tech trends and innovations weekly. So make sure to subscribe not to miss a single video. Right. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. So, okay. Let's get back to our presentation here. Okay. Let's get back to this. So, thank you very much, Amanda. Okay, so let's get back to where we were. And um, so that's, um, I, I bet you um, Samia probably could have made a, a video like that one. <laughs> so that's, uh, that was, that sounds a lot like what you were uh, sharing with us, Samia, in your, in your comments about your, uh, what you, currently do in your career so, so yeah so for so sure definitely cool. professor this is like really something my day to day um, in IT industry um, and specifically working towards more towards technical side is always that dealing with data and all those you know going into more technical is like SQL queries and pulling data from databases so that's that's definitely my day to day and yes I can definitely weigh in and uh, talk about when needed when it comes to data and decision making towards data very good very good i'm gonna I, i'm going to assume that it's probably good, gonna be the case with uh with this group in general so you, you have um you come from different um professional um, backgrounds and experiences and i i think as we go through this this course uh, a lot of you, just like uh, Samia, is gonna, uh, you'll be able to to share uh, your experiences. That's that's really how we 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 learn in uh, these types of uh, courses where it's uh, very career oriented. Uh, so so very good. You know, I, I noticed that um, the three companies that uh, they they uh, wanted to to highlight <laughs> for us: Google. Amazon and Netflix, and you know, and and we know those are hugely successful companies, and they all use, uh, they, they are all data driven companies, and so they they they're able to look at the market trends, and so that's that's just foreshadowing or, or being able to um, uh, to 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 look, you know, uh, at uh, at what may be coming, you know, over the horizon, and uh, that might disrupt uh, business and so 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 it's just, just fascinating fascinating so so here we are we're, we're back to this um 
this uh, this first task. And um, so uh, I gave you this this challenge, you know, to distinguish among the following sets of items and suggest the significance of each in a research context. So for, first, um, let me ask you, you this. Um, uh, during that 10 minutes, uh, you, you, you were um, doing this activity. Did anyone need an additional time? Because that, you know, that was considered class time. I, I assume you're working on this. Did anyone need an additional five minutes to um, a, a break to at this point to to take care of anything? I just I just want to make sure I'm being sensitive about that because we've been going here for over an hour now, and uh, and uh, that's really the only break you had was an activity. So. Um, uh, Seeing, sure. Okay. Okay. So I, I I'm going to assume since no one is speaking up that uh, you're you're all good. Uh, okay, professor. So, yes. Yes, I'm in. I want to under to ask about uh, what is deduction and induction because I, I work in the HR, so the two terms are. Uh, are two different, you know, concepts. Deduction is a punishment, induction for new new employees. So maybe, can you enlighten me a little bit here? Okay. So since this was an assignment for you and your your classmates, um, I'm going to put it out there to the group. Um, someone want to to uh, help us out uh, with that? This deduction and induction. I think here uh, the confusion happened because uh, uh, both the terms deduction and deduction related to HR deduction, which related to salary and uh, punishment and induction is for training of new employees inside the company. I think here it's not uh, the same definition uh, meant in uh, deduction and induction in uh, research. Deduction and induction research, uh, deduction means decision based on accepted facts. Uh, while induction, I think it's a decision based on uh, observation. Mm -hmm. decision okay. Very good, very good, uh, Mr. Hussain. Yes, Mr. Yusuf, you wanted to also. Come yeah, up. I think uh, I think uh, he nailed it uh, uh, because in in operation it's uh, way different than uh, like HR uh, uh, concepts or uh, point of view. So in operations, it's different, but I think uh, uh, Mr. Hussein nailed it. He he got the exact explanation. Mm -hmm. Very good. So Mr. Mr. Abad, is does that um, help you? Is is does that um, is is that clear? The, the, is that acceptable? Do you still have questions about it? Partially helping me, to be honest. Because uh, I, I have a spotty internet, so I heard about induction, like t uh, in the research, oh. it's based on observation, but deduction is what? Oh, you're, you're, you're I, I in couldn't in. catch that. Yeah, you're coming in and out. Um, so, Mr. Yusuf, do you want to, uh, he, he still is trying to, determine what the deduction is, uh, or anyone else. It doesn't have to be Mr. Hussein, Mr. Yusuf, anyone else who wants to, to. Um... I think, uh, so uh, deduction uh, in, uh, in research, so the, uh, the researcher will start with the, a theory and test it. And uh, induction will be, uh, 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 we'll gather like uh, a specific observation first and then uh, uh, build a conclusion of it. Okay. So it's 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 uh, uh, like the opposite side. So the uh, deduction, they will have a general idea and then uh, based on the observation, they will uh, collect uh, data. But uh, induction will be uh, the opposite. They have the observation first and then they will a conclusion based on the observation they have. Okay, okay, very, very good. Mr. Thank Howard. you. Okay, good, uh, that, was, that was very thorough. Thank you, Mr. Yusuf, and thank you, Mr. Howard. Uh, very good. 
Okay, so so then that takes care of that particular one. I think that that was very, very well done. Thank you. Uh, so uh, what about data information and insights? So uh, what's the significance of each of those in our research context? Data, we, we talked a little bit about data, so I think we're, but information and insight, just insight. What, what do they mean by insight? Um, why, why is that important? It's, I mean, is, is it something that you can even define? Yes, Alina. Um, insight is basically, you know, that that we are going in depth in the raw dat data. That uh, means deeper understanding of that data, uh, which is derived from various sources. Um, like, for example, in IT industry, we use ETL technology to be able to pull data from various sources and then transform it and then clean it up so that it's like business ready so that business users can easily read it understand it and see that where is the use of that data so it's basically insight insight is basically really going deeper into that data and then pulling what is useful for the business okay uh, first uh, we'll hear from elena uh, uh, yes, I can share my experience how I work with research on data and information. For instance, when I have the case, first I gather data, then I uh, transform also information and I am looking for deviations from data. And when I can see deviations, I observe the insights. Why is these deviations? What is the pattern? Why there, for instance, um, some figures are going down or going up? So for like my my practice, the insights is something not uh, uh, specific, either specific. Uh, it's a pattern. So this helps to uh, develop or to resolve the issue. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Mr. Yusuf, yes? Uh, I think the main idea uh, like about like insights. So to identify the uh, gaps uh, or like uh, trends or patterns, uh, to uh, make it easier to take the decision. So this is like insight. Uh, you will collect the data, uh, analyze it to identify the uh, patterns or uh, trends, and then uh, take the right decision. Okay, very good. I think you're, you're, you're all on the same same pace uh, uh, so far. It's, it seems like you're all in agreement. Yes, yes Mr. Hussain. <clears throat> I agree with my colleagues and I want to add just, I think it's uh, something like uh, steps. Data is coming in the first step because it's, uh, through uh, information without uh, categorization uh, and then come information which categorizes this data in some form or sorting it in any type of sorting. Then uh, the insights come in the last uh, stage or last step by put my input and analyze this information to help me to take the decision. Okay, very good. All right, so are, are, are these objective or subjective uh, uh, insights? But um, what would you say? Would you say this is based on uh, what you are truly observing or, or what you are deducing from your, um, from just, just personal uh, experience and, and perspectives? I consider that figures don't lie, so that's uh, <laughs> mostly objective. Okay. okay, very good, very good. <laughs> so, right. Okay, so um, so good. So we, we a concept and construct. Hmm, that's um, that that's a tricky one. Um, I know a lot of people will use those interchangeably, but within this uh, this 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 realm of research uh, that we're we're talking about what is 
uh, you know, so 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 what 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 are there, is there a contrast in comparison between the two, um, or is just one one way to say the other? Uh, what is this concept and construct that um, that they're talking about here? So. I give you. I'll give you a, a, a little bit of a hint. Um, a theory uh, with. Uh, Typically, be oh, oh go ahead, um, Mr. Yusuf. I before I speak, yes, go ahead. I think uh, so. I um, I raised my hand before you. Uh, you go ahead. Uh, sorry, Mr. Holiday. So you can go ahead. I have something in mind, but I will I will follow you after after you finish your speech. Sorry. Okay. Well, I, I I was just trying to to prompt, <laughs> give everyone a little bit of a a, a boost, a little hint uh, that a theory theory is a construct, and and that's as far as I was going to go with that. But go go ahead, Mr. Yusuf. So, my understanding that you may have like many concepts, which is like mm -hmm. general ideas, but the construct is the one you use to like uh, uh, undergo your uh, research. I don't know if this is right or wrong, but this is my understanding. Okay. Okay, that's 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 good. Uh, anyone else? Yes. So let's just start with concept. Um, when someone says. I have this concept. What 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 are they what are you talking about? When, when they say, you know, here is a concept. What what does that mean? When you and and there's there's no right and wrong answer here. I just you know, in your opinion, when someone tells you I have a concept, what do you think? In your opinion, your own personal opinion, what does that mean to you? He will talk about his personal experience or past experience. Okay. Very good. Um, a general idea. I see that there. Yeah, yeah general or point of view. Okay. So your stuff says a general idea, point of view. Okay. Does the context matter in which these these words are used? So let's say uh, a concept is is just as Mr. Hussein and Mr. Yusuf has said. Um, I'm going to tell you about my experiences uh, um, um, and my point of view, a general idea. Um, can a concept be uh, this uh, a specific idea? Or, or a, a product. So let's say someone says uh, they're on sh the, the television show Shark Tanks, and they're they're there to to present uh, their product. Is that product um, a concept? Okay. Is that true? Look, oh, here uh, and some someone says construct might be more detailed or in in depth than a concept. Okay. Okay. Very good. So, so then that construct is, um, I said a theory would be a construct. So, so what does that lead to? So if we, if we're talking about a concept, my concept is this, this idea, you know, um, you know, that, that someone wants to, to present or share and a construct is um, okay. Constructs helps researchers to personalize abstract ideas into observable and quantifiable terms. Okay, <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so so good. So let's let's move on down the list, and th that's this. Those those are excellent. Uh, thank you. Um, yep. Thank you, Samuel. That's 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 no. That was Samuel's. Uh, 
explanation that's very good so so good so now, now that brings us to hypothesis and theory and again these are two that people do use interchangeably and and uh um incorrectly or, or correctly you know that's not the point here the point here is that they each have a specific role in research. So what is the role of an hypothesis? Let's just start there. So you, you, you have these research questions and each research question is going to have, you know, two sides of the hypothesis. So you have hypotheses for each research question. And why is that? So what, so what is this hypothesis? What, what is an hypothesis? Some, someone just uh, share that with me. And, and I know there were some issues with accessing the, 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 the ebook. So uh, that's, that's why it's important for me to review these things in these lectures. So that's, um, it is in the reading but um uh, due to to some of the issues we were, we're having um we were having I, I think that's that's been resolved i think you all have copies of the ebook if not please mention that to me in that email about accessing the um the assignments and the quizzes as well but an hypothesis just Okay, so I'll give you a hint. Um, with uh, with your research question, you are making you know you you have an idea of uh, of what the outcome might be at the end of this research. However, you have to accept that your assumption could be wrong, and so your hypothesis. Is going to drive that it, it, that um, that uh, opposition of, uh, of of thought, where it could be this, or it could be that. An hypothesis is usually uh, uh, either this or that uh, kind of a statement. So, so given that that little prompt there, um, uh, someone uh, share share with the the rest of the class what your idea of. of an hypothesis, yes, Mr. Yes. So, in in my understanding, like hypothesis will be a, a prediction. So you don't have data yet. You have a, a point of view. You 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 need to uh, prove it, but you don't have data yet. So you will observe data. You will collect. Like uh, you will um, make um, uh, some tests to get the your uh, final. Uh, 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 like results, but theory you have already like data, like historical data, and uh, uh, you have some results to uh, uh, to uh, what do you call it to prove your uh, theory. So it's I think uh, uh, theory uh, it's built upon like uh, existing like results. But uh, 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 hypothesis is uh, something like predictions. You don't have a proof yet for your. Uh, okay. Uh, Very good. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, go, go ahead. Continue. Okay. Very. That's that's very good. That was that's very good. So so when you're doing research, you're testing the hypothesis. And uh, just as Mr. Yusuf said, um, with with the theory, it's, most research um, is conducted because someone has a theory, <laughs> and um, and that that theory is um, is what forms that uh, that research question or questions, and then the, the questions are what are, are going to um, uh, form your hypothesis, and then you test the hypothesis. Uh, with your your scientific uh, method in that uh, research study, so um, 
so very good that's 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 excellent uh so let's see here um see if we can get through, through all of these uh the, it's amazing how quickly two hours can come by as you know i, I think some of the technical issues that way that i was having uh oh, oh here um so saying says um hypothesis assumption uh maybe for researches been done. yeah good yeah does i i i think you uh, theory explains results obtained after research. Very, very good. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's that's good. So that's almost the opposite of of, uh, of what I, I was saying in there. So that's uh, um, so so. Do you believe that a theory can drive research, or you believe that uh, because um, of the results that they can get after the research study, it uh, uh, they are then uh, able to theorize that uh, this uh, this um, uh, this is um, something that occurs um, given uh, a certain con con condition. There's some kind of um, uh, uh, association uh, with uh, with two different things. So so for, so very good. I um, I I'm just saying, I'm just I'm, I'm just asking you. Uh, do do you believe that uh, theory? Would uh, always just explain the results. Do you believe that? Do you accept that theory can also drive uh, uh, um, the research? Can be the uh, um, the um, ignition, if you will, for our research. And I believe that your your response is correct. I just wanted to to, to know if uh, if you believe that. Um, uh, okay, Elena says hypothesis is an assumption, while theory is an attempt to explain things that have been sustained by substantiated by data. Very good. Okay, so that's that's very good. Very good. Okay, so so the research is going to um, theory is derived from the results of research, or or as Elena um, so eloquently put it, uh, things that have been substantiated by data. Very very good. That's that's good. I, I they're all very good. Very good responses. So this. Let's see here. Um, let's grind the characteristics of, of the scientific method. So the scientific method. So so this the scientific method method is is really the outline for for research. So um, what, what what does that entail? What uh, you know we 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 kind of talked a little bit about it. Um, I think we kind of we framed it as in in our discussion we framed a scientific method, but uh, I want to to give you an opportunity to to share with the class. Yes. Um, yes, uh, Samia, please. So, Professor, I mean when it comes to scientific method is basically that systematic approach of really investigating and understanding um any 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 topic or any 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 product or any uh, process and really um involving it in the series like character and characters and steps which helps the researchers to formulate any any test hypothesis or get, gather evidences um, and really derive to draw reliable um, conclusions. Very good, very good. So, so then, um, so what comes before the research question then? What in that scientific method in that process? What would come before a research question? I mean. Why are we asking the question in the first place? But what has occurred to make us even have a question of questions?
Yes, Samia. Sorry, I'm just trying to follow your question that what what caused to follow us a scientific method, right? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, any I mean, in my understanding, any idea or any any um, any idea came into or like like we were discussing earlier that um, any viewpoint came into somebody's mind and they they started thinking that this is something we need to really pursue towards research um, and then moving forward the that particular topic and then their point of view and then doing the research on that. So I think starting from the point of view or the idea which really drives somebody towards the research. Okay, very good, very good. And, and, and Elena, please. Uh, in my opinion, that uh, the scientific method uh, mostly uses when there is a certain uh, necessity to arrange the investigation. Uh, for instance, when we can see in the data some sort of deviation, so we conduct investigations to understand the nature of this uh, uh, of this, I would say, like deviations in that information to check whether it's right or no, and to understand that um, results. Okay, very, very good, very good. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else want to contribute to that? Oh, uh, let's see here. And um, so, Mr. Hussain says. Characteristics of scientific method, data driven, based on theories, constructive, based on variables. Very good. That's a good summary of that. So I, I, I like that. Um, idea uh, versus need or necessity is all, all, all drives research. Thank you, Samia. Yeah, that's true. So, so they begin with um, uh, uh, a problem, the research problem. Right, and 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 then um, that problem uh, um, drives the question, and the question, the hypothesis, and then uh, we test those hypotheses, and then uh, the results, as you've uh, several of you have uh, said, um, um, establishes um, uh, you know the the um, uh, proof or um, a theory. Uh, that uh, uh, that um, there is uh, um, a cause a causation um, from uh, the association of, of, of a group of things in um, that we've been testing in the research. So um, so very good, very good. I, I, I like that. So so uh, so we want to uh, define the following terms: business research data silo strategic inflection point so um interesting um, business research so so when we're talking about research research in general why should business research be any different from any other type of research why why this business research has to be unique what what is that all about why why Yes, uh, Samia, please. So um, again, I think I'm going to repeat myself uh, that it's a similar thing that when we are having a problem issue and then we identified that issue and we need to research that we are designing our research and really collecting all the data towards that particular research and doing data analysis, then we are we are providing that data analysis results to the business and then we are moving towards and then getting our finding the recommendation towards our research uh, from the business and then we are finally implementing that that particular product or evolution to be to help be more helpful towards business okay very very good uh, very good yes uh, mr yusuf
Yeah, so I, I agree with uh, uh, Samia. I think uh, business research is like, uh, it's based on like, uh, uh, it has uh, some steps. So first you need to identify the gap or uh, problem or issue, and then start uh, collecting data, uh, analyzing it, and uh, identify the uh, trends or uh, uh, a relationship between the like uh, the main uh, factors, and then uh, uh, take the decision, uh, and then uh, you will um, um, observe and uh, monitor the uh, uh, performance, and uh, uh, you will have like continuous uh, improvement of the process you just uh, implemented. Okay, very good. So uh, here, here's a good example. We, we, we talked about uh, uh, the one video mentioned Netflix. And, and as I said, Netflix is a hugely popular and hugely successful um, business. However, they do currently have a problem. And uh, the problem is uh, friends and family and neighbors are sharing accounts. <laughs> and so Netflix is now challenged with how do they um, how do they um, uh, 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 recoup uh, this perceived loss in revenue on these shared accounts? Now, this is not new, right? Netflix has been investigating this for a while, and and for a moment, it seemed like they were going to just kind of let the issue um, go, and and they weren't going to um, pursue this. Uh, uh, this uh, this very much but now recently it, it, they, they've even given a deadline i think it's uh sometime within the next few weeks uh, they are going to um start shutting down these uh these shared accounts somehow uh, disabling um those uh, those those the the the, the shared uh, uh, link so the, the, if that person isn't at the address the residence that's um, uh, under contract with that account is going to be that that um, uh, access will be disabled. So, so what do you think happened? It sounds to me like uh, perhaps maybe uh, Samia and, and Elena uh, were probably in, you know, um, and, and of course, I don't know, you, you wouldn't be at liberty to say because that would be a non disclosure issue, but. Um, this was this would be similar to something that you might David, am I correct? Um, the type of research that would result so, in this decision. So professor, that location yes. based location based identification that where exact from where exactly you are uh, you are accessing your account, I think to some extent they already have. I don't know what will be their their new technology to be able to really, completely identify that on the basis of address but on the countryside they are actually actually analyzing if you are accessing your account from one country to another for example i you know, i'm i'm basically from india i live in new york and sometimes when i travel back to india and i'm trying to access netflix from there the they're, they're not going to allow me even though i'm using the same username and password they're not allowing me because they are basically then then noticing that this location country is different than usually what I access. So I think that location based is already there, but I think they are now implementing address based. So yeah, that will be interesting. That's, that's, that's fascinating. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, yes, Mr. Yusuf. Yeah, I think this uh, was the like most stupid uh, decision uh, uh, like uh, Netflix made. And uh, I don't think they had enough time to uh, uh, to make that the, the research. So they didn't uh, take enough time to make make the research and uh, evaluate the uh, like risk. Because I think in the first day of uh, when they announced that uh, friends and family members cannot share their uh, credentials. They lost already like one million or one one point three like million uh, subscriptions. Mm. Uh, uh, so uh, I think uh, uh, what Samia mentioned that they used IP address 
to uh, to identify who is using uh, the like credentials and where and this uh, raised a very big uh, privacy concern with mm -hmm. the customers so if it's me okay so if you are taking my ip address this is a very big privacy concern mm -hmm. i cancelled my netflix subscription like two years ago for many mm -hmm. reasons one of them is uh, the uh, the new uh, 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 like subscription uh, uh, strategy they are using and the other one was something not related directly to this uh, decision but it was based on their references in the uh, 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 the new bro uh, like uh, uh, productions they are uh, planning so i think uh, uh, they lost uh, a lot of customers uh, based on the i i i don't know if it was the wrong like research method they implemented or it was not didn't take like enough time to uh, analyze uh, the the future like uh, risks but i think they lost a lot of uh, customers they they had a a, a, a loss and uh, at the end of the day when they uh, took the decision uh, based on uh, their uh, uh, desire so uh, let's say uh, let's let's like uh, form it this way so they don't they took the decision first they didn't do the research and based on the data they analyzed the data and took the decision i think there was a gap between the research they have done and the final uh, results <laughs> very good I, that's 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 very good i like that Okay, so uh, thank you, thank you, um, uh, Mr. Yusuf and, and, and Samuel. Thank you so much for that. Um, so yes, um, and, and, yeah, Netflix has uh, they have an issue. <laughs> they 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 really do. And and uh, you know, I wonder if uh, initially um, my thoughts were that it was just a reaction. They 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 saw that they. Um, revenue was down, and they needed to figure out a way to to increase that revenue. And then they saw that, well, you know, we have for every customer, we might have two, um, you know, uh, users, non-paying users, um, for 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 every customer. And so that uh, if they could figure out a way to capture that, uh, then um, uh, then boy that that would really boost revenue and and like i said then they backed off of that but now they're really going at it pretty pretty hard so i i i wonder if um somehow uh it, the, they've done the research and and uh, the results of that research says that the risk is um uh, a, a, the, the risk analysis uh, is in their favor uh, to to do this, uh, although it won't be popular, and they could, you lose customers. Just as Mr. Yusuf said, um, for for reasons um, that, that he didn't disclose, he you know he 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 um, is no longer a customer of uh, of Netflix. Um, but for some reason, they're really pursuing this quite quite hard, quite aggressively. So I think the um, uh, the risk analysis is is in their favor. They 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 know they're going to lose some customers, but I, I think they're probably thinking. I, I, I they're hoping the the research is giving them a theory, if you will, that um, if they do this, a lot of people aren't going to want to lose that um, uh, that access uh, to to Netflix, and they will pay that seven ninety nine. Uh, which is what their uh, the the, the um, um, market is saying. Uh, they they, they uh, uh, Netflix is going to offer those who want to uh, have friends and family on their account. Uh, they will pay an additional seven ninety nine for each additional user uh, beyond you know that uh, that uh, IP address or that physical address. 
that um, is, is, is associated with that contract. So, so, so very good, very, very good. Um, okay, good. So let me. We're 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 going to be short on time, and 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 uh, I don't have any issue with not being able to get through a lecture. It's not about you know railroading my way to through a, through a lecture. It's about these these discussions that we're having, and that is um, uh, you're you're taking the the information that you bring with you, the experiences that you bring with you, and uh, the assigned uh, reading material uh, from the textbook, and then we are putting it into, um, we're taking the theory and putting it into, into practice, if you will, uh, where we're, we're taking those, those concepts and those ideas that we're reading about, and we're, um, you know, kind of fleshing them out in these lectures. So, so, so very good. So, um, okay, the blow are some terms commonly found in a management setting. Are they concepts or constructs? Uh, give two different operational definitions for each. Define the following terms employee morale, assembly line, overdue account, leadership, ethical standards. And I'll be honest with you, when I read this list, I thought, well, that's. Uh, that, that's that is a very random list, so. Um, so here we are. So uh, are they concepts or constructs? Employee morale. Yes, uh, Samia. So in my understanding, employee morale, I mean, it, it can be both, right? I mean, it depends if we are using it as a research topic or we are really analyzing it in, in an organization. So um, I think in my understanding, it can be both because it's basically when we are saying that con it's a concept, then we are basically uh, broadcasting that sense that imp how employee morale is represented in an organization and um, for their job satisfaction, for their well-being and their overall, overall attitude towards workplace. And in research, it could be that we are optimizing um, that how um, how it can be translated and measured that in 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 various organizations how sat satisfied the employees are and um, if they are satisfied with their job and they are really performing towards the organization success and goals. Okay. Okay. Very very good. Very very good. I like that. So. So good. Does everyone agree with that? Yes, Sami, you have you have an, uh, another comment, Sami? Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. In my understanding, it's it can be like uh, uh, broadly used in both in 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 a in a research as a research topic and as a as a as a topic within an organization. So it could be both concept and uh, construct um, because. Both actually points towards employees' emotional well-being, their job satisfaction, um, and and if and and really their their tenure. If and it all depends on their tenure, right? If they are not satisfied with their job, they're not going to stay in that organization for longer. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it it could be both in my understanding. But yes, happy to hear more ideas on that. Absolutely, very good. Yes, Mr. Yes, uh, I, I, again, I agree with uh, Samia. So it's it's both. So uh, uh, some organizations will uh, have uh, their like uh, let's say internal customer satisfaction as their concepts, and they will use uh, data uh, to improve this uh, like uh, uh, employee satisfaction. So they will measure it using like some tools to understand, uh, let's say, uh, uh, job satisfaction, uh, uh, quit uh, uh, indicator, uh, uh, like attrition rate. Uh, uh, so it's 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 kind of concept as a point of view, and then it's construct 
based on the daily, day-to-day, -day, like uh, uh, they call it uh, clicks or something like this. So uh, they will measure the uh, employee satisfaction every day using different tools to identify the gaps and take necessary decisions uh, to reduce the uh, quit uh, uh, indicator or to increase uh, the uh, the satisfaction and uh, they might have like different uh, tools and different uh, measures uh, or uh, also different uh, factors to measure so let's say uh, uh, pay is one factor uh, 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 shift hours is uh, one factor. Uh, uh, maybe workload is one factor. So they will continuously uh, uh, collect data and then take necessary decisions based on the overall experience. Okay, very good. Yeah, and and we're going to be getting into that as we start to study surveys. Now we're 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 basically um, out of time, so I'm going to. Go ahead and, and get through this. So research thought leader. Okay, Wayne um, Eckerson, director of research tech target. Uh, four thinking executives recognize that analytics may be the only true source of sustainable uh, advantage since, it's in, since it empowers employees at all levels of an organization with information to help them make smarter decisions. So that's that's interesting. That um, um, that's, that's quite the statement there. So, you know, I I I wanted to to uh, to quote that and and um, and I'll hear some of the things that we we didn't quite get to. But I, I want to encourage you to go back and read. Um, uh, make sure that you you understand some of these concepts um, again. As I said in the orientation, we might not get through everything that's in a chapter during these lectures, but you might see them on that proctored exam later on. So um, make sure that you feel comfortable and uh, and that that learning objective uh, is is um, is uh, is met. Uh, and if you have any questions or concerns, be sure to reach out to me in email. Again, please. Um, Reach out to me and let me know if you have had issues with accessing the assignments and the quizzes. I believe that the ebook was sent to each of you. You should have access to that now. Um, and, uh, and and also remember to go into those discussions. And one thing that I hadn't seen in the discussions is that uh, as your replies to each other, to one another, I was able to go in and reply to your discussions, but also as you post, look for um, posts by your your um, uh, classmates and, and respond to at least one person. And, and, and like what I like to do is I like to see who hasn't had a response. And if I'm in a class and I need to respond in a discussion post, I, I go down to listen to this, you know, look at the ones that uh, were, were posted uh, the latest and, and maybe uh, haven't had any feedback from their peers. So um that's um that's you know it uh we, we didn't get to um a lot of this stuff but um uh, i wanted to to share one more video with you but we are out of time um uh, i'm going to uh, be talking to uh administrating administration about uh, the, the group um um <clears throat> function of being able to do the breakout groups. I should have done that prior to that. I know that they do monitor these sessions, so they're aware of that. Uh, I, I, I ran into that roadblock and, uh, and that was uh, one of those self-made uh, <laughs> issues that uh, didn't come prepared. So I do apologize for that. But uh, listen, I, I don't, I wanna be, I wanna respect your time. And uh, you, you've signed up for this for these two hours, and we are out of time right now. I really enjoyed the comments. Um, I look forward to, to reading your discussion posts for this coming week. And uh, again, please reach out to me if you have any uh, questions or concerns. And enjoy the rest of your day. So thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.
Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Have a great rest of your weekend. Bye bye. You're welcome. Bye bye. Thank you, Professor. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Holiday, and thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of the day. Bye bye. Bye bye.